Hi, I'm Cher and welcome to episode 4 of Wahibi Forage. The sun keeps on moving but Fuzzy is very heavy. He's come to say hello. Say hello Fuzzy. Hello. He seems to know when it, I think I have to go feed the cat and then I can come back. So welcome back to Wahibi Forage and this is episode 4. Fozzie has been fed. I'm house sitting again on Waikiki Island. But, um, the first thing I'll do is start off with this um, amazing spindle that Marina Strawberry Patches. You can see her podcast. She did a great episode on Istanbul. So uh, she brought me back this amazing Turkish spindle, and I've decided to call this spindle Buffy because it looks like she could slay a vampire and when Marina gave me the spindle she gave it to me with the arms up this way which I'd never seen before so I thought I'd give it a try and it works pretty well and what I love about this long uh, spike is that I can do what I usually do with my spindle is I sort of rub it against my leg get extra twist and away it goes so I quite like that the arms are up it, it's beautifully made and uh, very well balanced it's very it's a very heavy spindle so it took a little bit of getting used to I've used silk merino and alpaca blend uh, from fiber to go there we go yeah so I've spun 50 grams on this so far and I'll be able to probably fit the whole hundred grams onto this uh, spindle and then because you can create a center pull ball so you just slide out the arm like this and then slide these out here uh, yeah apply the yarn and see how it is as I said very heavy and a bit of um, health and safety um, always wear shoes when spinning But uh, I took it away with me to Khan and um, I spun quite a lot of the weekend. I did continue with my swancho and, and uh, made some progress on that. But yeah, uh, this has um, added to my spindle collection. Finished objects. So I'm wearing uh, the jumper. I'll show you a picture of it a little bit later. So this is my uh, first ever freeform jumper. Uh, has a three quarter sleeve which I am quite happy with. I finished the edge by just doing a crochet loop, a technique that I had done before but was reminded of again when I went to um, Prudence Mapstone's workshop last Monday and it, and I had a, um, a hand spun tail spun yarn that um, that had you know tail spun I think every uh, probably 30 centimeters and uh, I so I just crocheted that and when the oh, I might have to pull that one down a little bit so when this one was sticking up so I've just sort of pulled it used a, a smaller crochet hook and just pulled it to where I want it so it sits nice um, yeah really happy with the uh, the end product Finished eating his meal. He might come, want to come up and um, say hello. Do you want to come up and say hello, Fozzie? Come on. Oh, he's a big boy. So, uh, Fozzie, I'll tell you a little bit about Fozzie. Say hi, Fozzie. So, Fozzie is a Christchurch cat. Uh, during the earthquake, the second big earthquake, he did a run away from his mum and uh, Jill didn't know where he was for the longest, longest time and when they were finally reunited it was a joyous time and when Jill moved to Waiheke shortly after the second earthquake, Fozzie came too and um, he did didn't he darling and uh, he ended up living with um, Jeremy and Diana uh, because Jill was moving around a lot at the time and um, so he needed a home that was a that was really settled and away from the road which we are here and uh, so he's got a nice home and we do have a few um, food security issues because when he ran away he did have to survive in the wild for a, a while he's been asleep on my coat 
all day. Oh, there was a kitty do. Awesome. I've been bird watching all afternoon and spinning. Everywhere you look in this house, there's um, birds, there's sea views. So on the weekend, I uh, we went foraging. Uh, Annette, and Anne and myself uh, spent Saturday morning up in the uh, spinning room that was um, artistically, creatively kind of messy. And um, we decided to go for a coffee to Pa Homestead and on the way we discovered some mushrooms. Uh, I'll be doing an eco dyeing workshop on the 11th of November at the Horticultural Society and um, when we discovered the mushrooms we thought oh uh, I haven't died with those so we're going to do an experiment with that which we'll be doing at the workshop on the 11th of November and my foraging bag finished it I have reattached the um, the reattached the straps the way I like them and I'll show you pictures of the um, yeah I'll show you some pictures of it actually being put into forage use So Annette, while we were finishing, Anne and I were finishing our coffee, Annette went off and foraged some mushrooms. And then on the way back from our coffee, Anne and I discovered a swing. Then we discovered a pre labyrinth, and I'll slip in pictures of those. Uh, in the afternoon, uh, we did some spinning. Uh, my friend Sonia, Mika, and myself, uh, and Annette was our guiding. Horse there. This is um, a coarse spun yarn with polworth and silk. So I coarse spun the original single and when I went to ply it I then spun the silk and plied the yarn as I spun the silk. And then I slightly felted it just to give it it was it wasn't quite balanced but it is it is pretty balanced now. Um, yeah, it is quite balanced now. So that, um, that was one of the yarns that I spent. This is me trying not to do sheer colours, but there we go. It is uh, three, three kinds of grey, a light, mid and dark grey, with a little bit of blue silk, if you can see that in there. It's a bit dark, with bling of course, bling because you can't help it. And then when I came home, and the next day I was going to spinning, Monday morning, so I had a little bit of the pole worth left over. And uh, actually, if I brought home any more fleece, Brenda and Annie were gonna have an intervention, so I thought I'd better use it all up, so um, there would be no need for an intervention. I'll take a picture and pop it in. That's what I got up to on the weekend for spinning and I did make a bobbin, uh, I'll pop in the photo uh, If you want to check out Susie Brown's uh, video on uh, painting your bobbin, it's a really cool little thing and I did that over the weekend and it was great and then I thought I was going to paint it over with Mod Podge and I thought oh, I might smudge a little bit so I'll get some spray. I got some spray varnish, brought it home today, sprayed it. Unfortunately the black outline pen that I chose started bleeding and so anyway I ended up rubbing off the what I, the work I'd done so it's kind of like I had to sand it off. So it's kind of like an uh, unintentional sand mandala. So, okay, today we have Deborah from Outlaw Young. 
We have had, we've been here at the St. Francis Retreat Centre for a, uh, a weekend long retreat and of knitting, drinking wine, drink the wine, what is it, the little badge, what is it, oh yeah, oh now I can't remember, <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> like, the spot. Drink, drink, drink the wine, eat the cake, buy the yarn, yeah, always buy the yarn, yeah, I've said that before, always buy the yarn. So Deb's going to tell us a little bit about the beginning of Outlaw. How did it all start? Um, it all started uh, actually about four and a half years ago. Um, officially, Outlaw is four years old because um, we launched Vanitas four years ago at Cannes. So how it started was a bit of a pipe dream with um, my partner, at the business partner at the time, Rhiannon, and I basically saying, oh, wouldn't it be great if we had some... Um, yarn, but that was, you know, on the on the five or ten year plan, um, until I randomly happened to email a company in America one day who were doing subscription boxes and say, so sometime in the future would you guys be interested in possum yarn? And they emailed me back and said, yes, can we have a sample, please? <laughs> so that is pretty much how Outlaw started. Um, because suddenly I had to get on the phone to the mill to Marie and say, I think I just sold a whole lot of possum yarn that I don't have and I need a sample. <laughs> Help! <laughs> <laughs> what I love about your yarn is it fits nicely in to these little gaps that we had in the New Zealand market with a five ply. We have all these patterns coming out with on Ravelry about five ply. I have all these patterns and I'm going, why didn't I need those? Oh, because I couldn't find the five ply. I want to use New Zealand yarn. So then we have the five ply by Hemia. A lot of ten ply patterns uh, coming out of the States and there wasn't much being produced. Not Nothing that I wanted to, to use and want to wrap myself in. So they, they're, they're brilliant, they, they just fit nicely. I love how they're spun, uh, I love the colour choices. Um, I've used bo the Bohemia Five Ply in two shawls now, mm -hmm. a Tunisian crochet shawl and the crown. Absolutely, I couldn't help it, I keep on going to Keepsake. I love Keepsake. And, um, and Deb gave me a rainbow pack, I'm really <laughs> happy. So I'm going to be uh, crocheting rainbows, I've decided already, I can just see it's going to be the, a modern Irish crochet blanket. And as I was saying in the workshop before, the joining yarn to be a different weight, but I think in a blanket, it'll be all the same. So I, I could join it with something uh, like fog or ill, something like that, just to make it a light coloured blanket so the colours it'll be so pretty pop. yeah yeah yeah, yeah naming the colours is lots of fun <laughs> kind of sometimes it's really hard to do and um, sometimes it's really easy it just uh, yeah it depends a little bit on the inspiration yeah well uh, the gothic yarns um, inspired by gothic characters and by gothic authors mm -hmm. and that's what I love like Austin I always think of Jane Austen yeah I go and get the Jane Austen yarn and then I get the Jekyll and you know I really love that that association and the Vanitas is it has an interesting little it's, it's based on an art movement isn't it it is it's, it's on the um the vanitas art movement which happened in the netherlands in uh the 16th and 17th century so that is why there is a skull on the ball band um it's not actually a sugar skull um which is the, like the mexican day of the dead so it's actually uh if you if you see a vanitas painting you'll probably recognize it because it's the, the ones that are um, they have the skulls and they have the snuffed out candles and the rotting fruit and things like that. And uh, so when we were choosing colours for Vanitas, what we actually did was made a great big mood board um, of the colours and that's the inspiration for them came from that. So um, yeah, so that's that's where that comes from. Yeah, yeah. so I get I get a lot of people who just think I'm because I put a skull on my label, but yeah. there is actually a, a whole reason behind yeah. it. Yeah, and and I really love that. It, it's another thing. It fits nicely into a, a part of what we don't have in New Zealand yarn. It's ninety percent alpaca. That's really different. It's, Everyone yeah, it's was doing like a ten or a twenty or a something blend, but it's ninety percent with that ten percent of merino for. 
uh, that stability. Yeah, and and the the reason the alpaca in it is so soft is it's because it's actually baby alpaca. Oh, and it's organic, isn't it? And it's organic. It's organic merino oh, and right. and baby alpaca. So yeah. that's why Vanitas is um, the special little oh, swish special, that it special, is. <laughs> special to me too, because how I got my job at New Zealand Fabrics and Yarn is I really needed to buy a ball of yarn, so I went into CD as Etsy Tracy. And I needed a ball of parchment to make a grey slice beanie. And I walked into the shop, bought the yarn, and walked out with a job. <laughs> True Which story. is awesome because I didn't even know that. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was really cool. So I was really, um, yeah, it was awesome. Any plans for the future? Uh, always huge plans. Um, next year is Outlaw's fifth birthday, of course. Um, so there are plans afoot for the celebrations. Um, there's also maybe, hopefully, keep your fingers crossed, on the drawing board there's going to be three yarns uh, next year, but you never heard that from me. Um, so, yeah, and there's always new colours and new things happening, so, yeah. Cool. So coming up is Outlaw October. Uh, so you're going to have different categories this time? Oh, uh, Outlaw October is going to be a bit of fun this year. We're going to have some different categories than we did last year, so it's all going to be based around the yarn ranges. But there's also going to be a special little thing that I'll be announcing. Hopefully next week I need to get home and do some work on it, um, which basically just means more prizes, so I'll be handing out more shopping sprees. So, um, yeah, you guys will want to be in on that. Um, and hopefully just create a little bit of fun um, and, uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. It's oh, always a blast. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So Deb from Outlaw Yarns and you can buy them all the yarn and New Zealand fabrics and yarn. We have most of the colours and I'm going to be talking to Tracy about a rainbow idea that we have. Oh, look forward to that. Okay, thank you very much and we've had a great retreat. We've just been knitting, spinning and drinking and yeah. And learning. And, and learning. Lots learning. of learning. Yep. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to my rainbow modern Irish crochet blanket of rainbows. Excellent. Thanks, Deb. You're welcome. Thank you. But look at that. Isn't that fantastic? And it's all mine. So I have this colour here. Let's zoom in there we go. That's absinthe. And bazaar. Uh, bazaar. Which I've used before. I've used this colour in my uh, Le Crow shawl. And then we have Gaslight here, Gaslight, um, this is Carnival, I'm really good at holding up labels upside down, this one here is Tarnished, and this one here is Ardo, there we go, Ardo. So that is an exciting project to look forward to. We also got spot prizes. Uh, I can't remember what I got my spot prize for. This is my favourite alpaca yarn. It's got 10% merino, 90% alpaca. Beautiful yarn to knit with. Okay, I'm back. I had to get a few more things from inside. Uh, on the on Monday when I was at Waikiki Spinners and Weavers, um, Mika and Sonia went to retreat and we were talking about the... Um, the cable yarn that Sharon was was doing so uh, I did a little experiment here just to show Mika next week um, how the cable plying works and I hope you can see this so I did an optical blend I had red and yellow Corridale and I blended it to make the orange I had turquoise and the last bit of the uh, pole earth can see see that so make it how the structure of the cable yarn works so I think we'll be doing that at spinning and weaving um, I'm planning to do a few spinning exercises just to uh, expand our spinning repertoire we've got a few people that um, are spinning at the moment so that's good and now uh, it's one show progress yep. so I've got four more rows to finish uh, the Tiratara and then I start the plain knitting and um, dividing up with the sleeves so we're getting there um, 
yeah summer is almost here now another project I did I decided I needed a new handbag before I went to knit August nights and I made if you've been following me on Instagram I put it on my story so this is from my eco dyed yarn I dyed this a couple of years ago this here I'll just show you up close is Pahutakawa and we've got the brown bits of rust and uh, these are from the garden the viola here and then I've got some more sort of Pahutakawa on this so this is all linen on the outside of the bag this is a cotton with eucalyptus leaves very thin eucalyptus leaves and from my friend Annie's driveway I found a flattened tin can a couple of years ago and I've used that in, the, in my dime and then I have some more violas eucalyptus and you can see some bodhikawa here and I'll just show you the top part of the bag so then I've got a pocket here it's really good for putting in sunglasses this here is geranium and some silver dollar around there and on the back here I've got on this part you can see some more eucalyptus leaves I have a shoulder so it goes across your body and this is all padded. I showed you this fabric in the Cowrie Grove episode so this is now um, made into the bag and just for the inside of the bag I've done a just to keep everything together I've done a little thing and we have a little leaf as well and then open that up I'm going to put in a few more things inside I've only got two pockets in here at the moment this one here slips in my iPad and this I usually put in my glass my reading glasses and yeah but I'm going to slip in a few more pockets and I'll put another lid over here so that's still a work in progress but I am using it and over this part of my my um, over this part here I'm going to put uh, another pocket that's in the shape of a leaf to put in my cell phone welcome back uh, before I sign off I'd like to share a few things with you uh, while I was filming this episode the Rainbow Warrior 3 was in Auckland Harbour I have some photos of that if this seems to be the Also uh, arrived uh, during this um, while I was editing this episode was the sock Metician and skein collaboration limited edition yarn. We're very proud to have that in store. Uh, I'll share with you the um, the yarn colours, the story behind each colour, and also I just feel that Nathan has just shared. Uh, his journey of discovering that he is HIV positive I just find him very brave and um, inspiring and yeah to put this into yarn is amazing Now, um, Cindy's given me permission to share this story, and this is about her daughter, Malise. And I was sharing her, I was sharing the story about Nathan's yarn and what it had meant to Nathan. And something very special happened. She said to me that um, her daughter had actually uh, come out as being gay during this process of um, her cancer treatment. Unfortunately, uh, Malise uh, died two months ago now, and um, the beautiful thing from sharing about Nathan's journey is that I was able to tell her about the story of the yarn, and during this very sad time for Cindy, 
um, she chose the some of the yarn to well she actually bought temples out in it a um, so she could think of her daughter while she was knitting so um, thank you very much Nathan for sharing your story because I was able to share it with Cindy and this has helped her during her process so um, Mali saw herself as a dragon and her mum as yarn and so she designed this tattoo for her mum and her mum Cindy is now wearing this um, tattoo sharing our stories it helps other people and especially when we're dealing with uh, processing grief and illnesses and recovering from illnesses uh, is uh, a very important thing that we keep sharing because through the sharing we can heal. Yeah. We brought two balls of wallas in Napier. That's self-control, totally. Um, I did buy also two skeins of silk which are still coming. Um, that's I'm planning my summer knitting. A bit of my tiny house adventure that I'll be sharing in a little bit. Um, just got to get a few things organized but it's a little bit of a surprise and um, yeah this seems to be peace love mung beans and rainbows episode it just I love how things just evolve as we as I'm filming and that a theme to to my life sort of just appears for a few weeks and then merges into something else I fully intend to be immersing myself in uh, rainbows uh, for Outlaw October. I'm looking forward to that. I'm madly knitting my swancho to finish that. Um, so today I'm going off to um, my friend Natalie's house. Uh, she's a and then I won't be there for long, so I'll be sitting there knitting my swancho furiously before I jump on a boat so I can go to the um, floozy party at Stitch and Bitch this afternoon which starts at 3. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and Pinterest uh, as Wahippie Forage and Instagram as Wahippie so subscribe to find out my uh, my surprises that are coming up um, yeah I surprise myself sometimes so yeah I've got a few challenges ahead of me in the next couple of weeks so let's see how we go. I'll also be, I had so much footage uh, from the retreats, so many photos, that I've decided to put that into one little mini episode, which I've decided already to call that uh, friendship. It's a very special, um, special connection that we have. And we're so lucky being um, immersed in, in fiber crafts and knitting. There's so many awesome people. So until next time, uh, Uru.